Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many a time in the church, you know, we are too much horizontal. People look to the minister, to who is ministering. They are too horizontal in the church. And sometimes the ministers also are like that. They also look to the people. So it is important that you worship, that you be vertical. That I connect with Jesus, you connect with Jesus, whoever ministers. And then you know God is speaking to you. You know God is releasing something into your life. Uh, as long as you're horizontal, men cannot help you. Are you with me? But as long as you're vertical in your worship, in your ministry, let me tell you, God will meet with you. God will set you free. God will anoint you. There will be something amazing that will come over your life. Amen. So lift your hands, lift up your voice and say, thank you, Jesus. To you belongs the glory. Our hearts are for you. Amen. Tonight, I want to just open up with John chapter 11. And verse 40. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if you would believe you would see the glory of God amen one title the message God wants to be glorified in your finances if you would believe because we are on a series of teaching on finances amen God wants to be glorified in your finances he wants to be glorified in your life. He wants to be glorified in your family. He wants to be glorified in your body. He wants to be glorified in your relationship. He wants to be glorified in your work, in your ministry. But God also wants to be glorified in your finances. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you will find in the scripture you will find in the scripture the word glory and riches in most of the places go up together. And we will look through a couple of them. Glory and riches the next series that i pray the holy spirit will enable us to learn and to move in is the glory series but one of the manifestations of god's glory is in riches and here the bible says jesus is saying if you would believe in me you would see the glory of god Look at somebody, if you believe in the Lord, you will see the glory of God. Amen. Amen. John chapter 17 verse 4. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Jesus is saying, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. So the works of God always will glorify God. The works of the devil will glorify the devil. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, Jesus said, I've come to undo the works of the enemy. I've come to undo the works of the enemy. Amen. Look at somebody and say, Jesus came to undo the works of the enemy. 
Because the works of God glorify God. The works of the devil glorify the devil. And so what are the works of God? How many of you, remember, how many of you know that the work of healing that God does glorifies God? Sometimes people think being sick, I grew up with a spiritual mindset thinking, being mentally depressed, being physically weak and physically sick was actually glorifying God. But in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Are you with me? So healing actually will glorify the Lord. So there is no spiritual mandate by which you should allow sickness to stay in your body. You might be sick, but tonight say in the name of Jesus, I receive my healing in the name of the Lord and let there be supernatural healing over your body. Anything that steals, anything that kills, anything that destroys, does not glorify God. Anything. Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 10, the devil comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and life in all its abundance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say life in all the abundance is our portion because we belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. So the works of the Lord is abundance. Look at somebody and say the works of the Lord is abundant increase glorifies God are you with me what is the opposite of increase not enough lack insufficiency so imagine you have lack in your life you have insufficiency you have uh, not enough the classes are about to start. You don't have enough to pay the fees. Does it glorify God? You started building a house that is not sufficient funds. Does it glorify God? You stepped out into a business, but your project is suddenly got stalled. You can't move forward. Does it glorify God? If it doesn't glorify God, if there is no abundance, no increase, then it means the enemy has got a foothold over it. And tonight, if you realize that, say, in the name of Jesus, enemy, you have no foothold over my life. You have no foothold over my finances. In the name of Jesus, abundance and increase is the portion that God has kept for me. Come on, church. I expected a better amen. I expected a better hallelujah. I expected a better praise or response. You are supposed to glorify God in all that you do. The works of God glorify God. In the book of Luke chapter 16, the the Bible uses the word trust not in un unrighteous mammon trust not in unrighteous mammon what is unrighteous mammon that is the money that you've got by questionable means have you get it are you with me if you have got finances through questionable means then it doesn't glorify God. It is unrighteous mammon. But the Bible also speaks about God who makes us rich and who adds no sorrow to it. So that is not unrighteous. It is godly riches. So not only what you have, but you how you got it matters. Are you with me? 
Not only what you have, but how you got it. If you got something by stealing, by cheating, by lying, it does not glorify God. It is unrighteous mammon. If you got something by deceiving somebody, it does not glorify God. But if you got it by the rightful means, and even for preachers, there are preachers, not in our church, but in different places. Preachers who get money unrighteously. They will say, support our orphanage program, collect money and use that to buy a car. When tsunami comes, they will put on the Facebook, big tsunami in Kerala. 10 lakh people homeless, support it. And they will build a nice big house. Are you with me? It is not only what you have, but how you get it. Look at somebody and say, always get it through godly means. God wants to prosper you. God wants to bless you. God wants to help you. But you get it through godly means. You don't do it by deception. You don't do it by stealing. You don't do it by deceit. You do it righteously. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those are the kind of blessings and the people who are God, whom God is going to raise up in this congregation. Hallelujah. People who have righteous wealth. People who know they've been blessed of the Lord. Lift your head and say, I belong in that category of being blessed of the Lord. You know, remember in Genesis chapter 14. Abraham says, I will not take from you anything to the king of Sodom, lest by any means you sh should say that you have made me rich. Remember that? There's nothing wrong with being rich, but the glory should go to God. Amen. There are offerings. There are donations that I've said no to in my life. Because people give a donation, they give an offering over 25 years of ministry and they want something of an influence or something that is attached to it. I say, no, thank you. Give it to some other church, some other ministry, some place else. Because here you give the glory has to God to go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory goes to Jesus Christ. Uh, lift your hand and say, through my, through my finances, glory has to go to God. You have to discern how things come into your life. When God blesses you, there is a deep sense of fulfillment. Imagine God blesses you. Some of you would know it by experience. There are some of you who are naturally wealthy. So with your natural wealth, you go and buy a car because you have money. It's good. Do it. There's no, nothing wrong with that. But you know when God has blessed you with a new car. Are you with me? When you look at that car, you will say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Or you build a house, not by your natural resources. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, what I'm trying to tell you is, in your relationship with Jesus, you know it is God who has blessed you with that house. And so every time you walk through the rooms of that house, you say, wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
there is a presence of god in that house there is you, you there is no sorrow attached to that house there is no sorrow attached to that car because you know it is god who has blessed you and that is kind the of blessing that i'm speaking about righteous money come to you coming to you the godly way where god has prospered you i release that grace upon your lives tonight in the name of jesus may you be righteously rich in the name of the lord amen praise the lord esther first chapter was four Esther 1 verse 4 Somebody read it please when he, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom See He showed him the riches of his glorious See the word glorious and riches Are connected together The king is showing forth the riches of his glorious kingdom. In the fifth chapter of Esther also you will find the same word. But we don't have time to go through those scriptures. But the simplest scripture that you all confess forth actually demonstrates that. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. My God, if you know it by heart, say it. My God shall supply all your needs according to to his riches in glory see glory riches my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory may it be a prophetic statement for you this month may God supply all your needs May there be a release of that word's anointing over your life. May every lack be broken off in your life. Insufficiency be broken off. Let the curse of debt and poverty be broken off. In the name of Jesus, may God supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. Lift your hand and say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get ready to see the riches of his glory manifesting forth in the area of finances for your life. Get ready in the name of Jesus. Get ready, hallelujah, to receive riches that comes by the glory of God. Godly blessings coming over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 The 19th verse Every man also to whom God has given riches See that? Who has given riches? See I grew up in a spirituality Not in the Bible That is not mentioned in the Bible But I grew up in a spirituality That made me to think If you are really holy you are poor because rich and holy no way poor and holy it's nowhere in the scripture but somehow people have got that in their head show me one scripture for that no but somewhere people have this thought poor and holy go together rich and holy don't go together rich and holy goes together that is biblical god ecclesiastes 5 19 every every man also to whom god has given riches and wealth and has given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor this is the gift of god this is the gift of god are you with me we are speaking about the gift of God. God has given riches and wealth. Look at somebody and say, God will give you riches and wealth. Riches and wealth. Riches and wealth. How many of you know that heaven is a rich place? You are not going to find a street with gutter in heaven. 
you're not going to see you know sewage running out onto the street heaven is a very rich place even the streets are laden with gold you should read revelations 21 and see the size of those gates and what kind of diamonds and pearls and precious stones adorn those gates are you with me in hell people ask for one drop of water there is no need of that in heaven there is an abundance there is an increase the place that you are going where jesus is taking you is a place of blessing it's a prosperous place it's not a poor place jesus said in john chapter 14 i go to prepare a place for you the, the bible version uses the word i go to prepare mansions for you just not a two bedroom house jesus said i am going there to prepare mansions for you wow wow one of the translations of that word is landed estate i was listening to a man's testimony who very powerful man of God who was translated in the spirit God took him to heaven and God showed him a house which had rivers and streams and mountains and a little bit of forests and boom beautiful and he said wow Lord this is so beautiful and the Lord said that is your mansion the Lord told him I custom make mansions for my children because I know what they want and what they like. Whoa! Hallelujah! You want a river, you want a mountain, you want a mansion. Hallelujah! Well, landed estate, God, customers are customs, cust, you know, custom makes it for you. Praise God! Hallelujah! Glory unto the name of Jesus. A custom made estate can you imagine that wow glory unto the name of jesus praise the lord hallelujah look at somebody and say god knows what his children like god knows what his children like Amen. Praise the Lord. When it is not God's gift of riches, there is condemnation, guilt, a lack of peace. God doesn't make anybody miserably rich. I've seen plenty of rich people who are miserable. I mean, they have everything. But they're just looking to end their life they're not happy they got everything but they're just miserable that's because god is not in it when god makes you rich he adds no sorrow to it proverbs 10 22 you are not miserably rich Ecclesiastes 5.19 You are joyfully rich. I release a grace over your life to be joyful in all that God has blessed you with. If He's blessed you with a bike, He's blessed you with a car, He's blessed you with a business, He's blessed you with a work, He's blessed you, hallelujah, to be joyfully rich. Lift your hand and say, I am going to be joyfully rich. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Not stressfully rich. Are you with me? God gives you the business you think and then you're stressed over it. No. God has blessed you with the rich business and you're not stressed. Too blessed to be stressed. 
Wow, God is blessed. God will take care of it. God will prosper it. God will enlarge it. God will increase it. God will bring abundance to it because he wants to bring about life and life in abundance. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is a God of increase. He will increase this. Lift up your businesses, the work of your hands, your jobs and prophesy over it in the name of Jesus. God will bless it. God will increase it. God will prosper it. There will be abundance in the name of the Lord. Wow, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let every lack, every miserableness, every depression, every yoke of anxiety and stress that is weighing you down be broken off in the name of Jesus. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Hmm? and I shall not want see the, the the picture of Jesus as a good shepherd and the sheep the condition of the flock is a direct reflection of the shepherd imagine you go somewhere and you see a lot of sheep and the shepherd is walking in the front and the sheep are like having eaten you can actually see their bones a couple of the sheep are limping some of those sheep are just miserably crying dirty got filth all over them worms and insects all over them you're going to look at the shepherd and say hey listen this is not a good shepherd because look at the condition of the sheep the condition of the sheep is a reflection of the shepherd just like your children are a reflection of you I. your children have uh, you know dirty clothes they haven't eaten they are kind of uh, miserable you know the parents are not taking care of them well but uh, your children are like full of protein and <laughs> well dressed then you know okay the parents are doing a good job imagine your heavenly father the good shepherd Jesus Christ and you say you are a sheep but you have lack you're miserable you don't know oh my god what will I do next week it's not a reflection that is why it is paramount that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ that is personal because he is a good shepherd he knows to take care of his sheep he will supply all your needs. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The sheep will have no want. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The better you look, the better he looks. Are you with me? You know, I was losing my hair here some time back. So I was asking God for supernatural hair growth. <laughs> I didn't want to be bald, you know, so I was praying, Lord, give me supernatural hair growth. It's our secret, don't tell it to anybody. <laughs> so I was asking God for that. So I met this man of God who's a good friend of mine. So I told him, I'm believing in God for supernatural hair growth. So he said, hey, I am very anointed, very gifted. Let me lay hands upon you and pray for hair growth. I said, no, because you're bald. He didn't have a single hair in his head.
and he wants to lay hands upon me and pray for hair growth I said you keep your hand upon your head <laughs> are you with me God is a God of abundance it's a God you want to title the message a God of too much when he gave fish it was a net breaking catch the boats literally were about to sink and other boats had to come praise the Lord and those boats were also filled up a net breaking catch a boat sinking catch praise the Lord glory unto the name of Jesus Christ when he gave he gave 12 baskets full hallelujah he is a God of abundance a God of increase lift your hand and say God wants to be glorified in my finances ിച്ചിട്ടുള്ളവർക്കെ So may the spirit of lack be broken away. Let your debt be cancelled. Let your poverty be broken off. Let there be supernatural increase in the name of Jesus. Look at somebody and say there is a supernatural increase coming. I really believe it. I really believe it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah you will be ever grateful to God for these teachings that I'm giving you on finances right from January right up through this May praise the Lord we have not stopped on these messages there is an impartation in the word there is an increase coming with the God there is a supernatural abundance of blessing coming forth in the name of Jesus As a matter of fact I strongly believe God will even give you things you don't need just to be glorified Hallelujah Praise the Lord 1 Timothy chapter 6 Now pastor why did you say that 1 Timothy chapter 6 17th verse charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded not trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy he richly gives all things for us to just because you like it God gives it to you you don't even need it Ah, come on. <laughs> That's the level that I'm speaking about. Some of you need to be renewed in your mind. <laughs> Some of you need to grab this word. Glory unto the name. You have so long, praise the Lord, walked in limitedness and just barely getting by and just barely having enough and just barely getting through the week and all that. Praise or naturally being riches, rich without enjoying God's riches. God wants to bring you out of that. God wants to richly give you all things so that you can enjoy that you can enjoy you can enjoy God wants you to be glorified by enjoying what he's given you you know the other day somebody in the church you know somebody whom I love very much God blessed him with a fantastic vehicle and I told him hey, I don't see that vehicle in your in the church on Sundays he said no no I'm too embarrassed to bring that vehicle to the church I'll bring in my chota car I said hello if you know it is God who gave you that take it to the house of God at least 
glorified Jesus and said, Praise God, hide it and buy this. God bless me with this. Come on, church. God does not want to bless somebody here because you want to be blessed in secret. You are not wanting to glorify God with it. Once an aunt came to my house. She came for prayer and she, I mean, I prayed for her and she spoke with me and she left. But later on, I came to realize when she came into the house, she took off all her jewelry, all put it all into a basket. Because she thought my pastor is going to think I'm very spiritual wearing this good sari and all this jewelry. Let me put it. <laughs> why would you do that? If God blessed you, why don't you glorify Jesus with it? Why are you ashamed? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't cover up your blessing. Glorify God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't be ashamed when God blesses you. Are you with me? God will release you to greater levels of blessing. But glorify Jesus. Glorify Jesus. You wear a good shoes. If God has blessed you with that. Wear it in church. Wear it somebody. Tell them God bless me with this. I still remember some of you don't need this you know 25 years back when I stepped out to walk by faith I had to trust in God for everything right from a pair of shirts to socks to shoes and so I would say Lord I need this shirt I need the shoes I need this I would ask him if you believe you would see the glory of God and whenever I would ask him he would give it to me if I ask him for one pair of socks he would give me two pair of socks if you believe you will see the glory of God so as a child of God you need to learn to ask that's a sign of faith Are you with me? Why don't you ask your father in heaven? You don't ask people. Some people have no problem asking somebody else. But they really don't have the faith to ask God. You want a good house? Ask him. If you believe, Most people think it is spiritual, they don't ask, they take it as no. Ask him, it's your father who gives you all things to enjoy. You want to fly business class? Ask him. Don't get envious of somebody else sitting in a business class and flying and say, Oh my god, I've been working hard so long. And all these preachers are traveling business class and ask him praise the Lord hallelujah you want to see a substantial growth in your finances in your business ask him that's a sign of faith if you believe you will see the glory of God. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 1 onwards. 
Are you learning something tonight? Is this simple? Is this, is this helping you? It's helping five people? Anyone? Uh, I wanted to actually continue on what I spoke last week. This was supposed to be an, just an introduction and continue on that life plan. But somewhere I feel the anointing on this now. So I'm just going to finish this through. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1. Yes, Isaiah 60, verse 1. In the year, the king... Isaiah 60, 6, 0. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Look at and someone and say, Arise, shine, for the glory of God is risen upon thee. Amen. Arise and shine. Not arise and be dull and boring. <laughs> arise and shine. Some people think, you know, coming to church, they have to be dull and boring and show for they are really spiritual. Look how miserable I am, Pastor. Arise, shine. For your light has come. The word of God is light is coming to you. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For though the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, yet the Lord shall rise upon thee and his glory be sh shall be seen upon thee. Amen. Read the third verse. And the Gentile shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Praise the Lord. Kings are going to come. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. People in power are going to come. When the glory of God rises over you, they will come into the house of God. They will come looking for you because you got something that they don't have. You have the glory of Jesus Christ residing inside of you. You have the wisdom of God abiding in you. You have the anointing of the Holy Spirit working inside of you. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Now, I wish I could say a lot of things from the pulpit, but Honest, I mean, I have to keep silent. That's it. These words are an experiencing. As a matter of fact, some of the people that God is just releasing forth to baptize are people that you would never ever think of being a believer or being in the church. The Gentiles. In high offices. Look at the fifth verse. Thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The forces or the wealth of the Gentiles shall come unto thee when the glory of God rises over thee. You hear that? Arise. Some of you do not arise. You just, you don't pray, you don't worship. You don't seek the face of the Lord. You're just sitting and wanting everything to come. No, arise. Shine. For the glory of God is risen over you. And with that glory, the forces of the Gentiles, the wealth of the Gentiles shall flow and come unto you. 
you be in the glory zone the blessing shall come look at somebody and say you be in the glory zone and the blessing shall come look at the seventh verse all the flocks of Kedar be gathered unto thee the rams of Nabal shall minister unto thee they shall come up with acceptance on mine altar and I will glorify the house of my glory our gatherings are going to be glory gatherings every time we gather together in the name of Jesus the glory of God is so gonna shine forth so gonna manifest forth with whoever preaches whoever prays whoever leads worship the glory of God is gonna come forth in such levels uh, that the blessings of God is just gonna flow through the people are going to see the revival fire of the Holy Ghost is gonna move forth uh, lift your head and say I receive that for my church in the name of Jesus don't be limited if you think you can be rich or blessed only through your job or through your business he is Jehovah Jireh once his glory comes supernaturally that's what it means here the wealth shall flow unto you not because even sometimes you work for it please work not because you believed hard enough not because you did something the wrong way but because you went the glory zone because receive that say amen hallelujah worship him this night hallelujah the glory I had some servants of God yesterday night here in the church and they were just praying and they one of them began to prophesy and said pastor you know people are so gonna see the glory of God while they step into this church that actually as an evidence to them while they're worshiping or they even walk through the car parking lot there shall be gold dust over them and they will know okay it's from the angels wings <laughs> i take it i take it praise be to the name of jesus hallelujah some of you might have to put the wiper in your car before you start off from here because it'll be glory dust over, <laughs> over the glasses <laughs> blessed be the name of jesus i am prophesying over your church i strongly believe there is supernatural anointing a blessing coming your way the glory of god rising over you when you come under the glory when the desire of your heart is to glorify Jesus in your finances in your relationships in your family in your church let me tell you the blessing will flow to you and imagine you go near somebody who has got flu and chances are that you get the flu How many of you ever gone before somebody who's got flu and you get the flu so can you imagine you are going to a place where the glory of God is coming upon you and you're gonna catch something it's not going to be flu it's not come on church lift your voice and say I'm gonna catch the glory of God I'm gonna catch the blessing of God station of his riches praise the Lord if you believe the criteria is if you believe you don't believe somebody else can have it remember the 10 12 spies who went through 10 of them unbelief two of them Joshua and Caleb they believed they got the promise 
Isn't it amazing? Sometimes people look to say, okay, okay, dude, just bring it on. Let me see it and then I'll believe. You go to some other dude for that. I preach the word of God. You trust in him, you will see the manifestation. Twelve tribes, spies from all of them, ten of them, never received. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb. Caleb was from the tribe of Judah. Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim. Judah means praise. When they went to see the land, Caleb walked in the front, Judah followed. Ephraim means double fruitfulness. Worship goes in front, fruitfulness follows you. Ah. Worship goes in the front, fruitfulness follows you. Forty years later, these two get into the land. But who goes in front? Joshua goes in front. And Caleb follows. The shift that is going to come in the body of Christ is there is coming where fruitfulness shall go in the front and the fruitfulness shall glorify so much of the Lord that praise oh, somebody received that this night hallelujah hey, hey, hey. I received that in the name of the Lord I received that in the name of Jesus when you're trying to believe Worship goes in the front. Fruitfulness follows. But the shift that is going to happen, glorify God with your finances, with your fruitfulness. Uh, where fruitfulness is, you're so blessed of the Lord uh, that people who see you, people who come behind you will say, I want to worship the God of Joshua. In the name of Jesus, Father, let there be a supernatural shift. Let there be a supernatural shift over your congregation tonight. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hearts, lift up your voice, glorify the name of Jesus. Let there be a supernatural shift. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tap somebody and say fruitfulness. Blessing. In the front. And worship is going to follow. People who see your blessing will say, Wow. God did that for you? Yes. God healed me of my depression. God healed me of my death. God healed me of my sickness. God delivered me from my affliction. Hallelujah. Help me to preach tonight. God brought this marriage through. God blessed my generation. God released my business. God brought me out. People who see it will say, Wow. Take it, take it, take it. Yes, you win the Namathi. Take it, take it, take it. Take it now in the name of Jesus. Take it now in the name of Jesus. Raida Jala Rabada. Hainda Samahatoli Adada. Yes, God did it. And they're going to say, We want to worship this Jesus. Amen. Because you're so glorifying Jesus. We not only in your spirit, not only in your body, not only in your relationship, not only with your mouth, but with your finances. Uh, lift your hands and glorify the name of Jesus. Let there be a shift in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Praise Him tonight. 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 
I cancel condemnation and guilt and fear and lack and poverty and debt in the name of Jesus. I command depression in the name of Jesus to leave. I command bondages to be broken off in the name of Jesus. The holy anointing of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands and praise Him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Soak it all in. Soak it all in. Take every blessing of the word. Take every prophetic word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release your praise, your sacrifice, your thanksgiving unto Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 H